I've just gotten off the plane here in London from Portland, and I still have things turned around a little bit. Uh, I'm jet lagging. But I've come here to see a good friend of everybody's, 3CPO. Oh, uh, pardon me, Master. That is C3PO. And C3... Have jet lag. I was never very good at spelling. Me neither. But then I it's... don't have to. Is there anything that you haven't been programmed for? Or have you been programmed, for example, to answer any question that an interviewer could ask you? Every question but that one, yes. And this, of course, is Anthony Daniels, the man in the C-3PO suit. Anthony, you've probably got the most colorful character in Star Wars or in The Empire Strikes Back, next right, to go perhaps on. Darth Vader, yes. Uh, curiously enough, the out of all the characters that I read in the script, the one that was the best written, which George wrote, was the character of uh, 3PO. And, you know, I didn't want to play it to begin with because well, who wants to play a machine? You know, it's like playing your favorite dustbin in the street. What about the voice? Uh, how did you decide on the proper voice for uh, 3PO? Well, it was more George Lucas deciding because uh, his, his right until the last minute, he really wanted an American robot. He wanted it to sound kind of Bronx. Uh, kind of sleazy type of character. And all the way through, I've been giving this terribly British performance that we've all seen now. And, you know, I don't know how you feel about it, but George wasn't too sure. Um, and fortunately, you know, there were enough people around to persuade him to listen. Excuse me, sir. Might I inquire what's going on? Why not? Impossible, man. Come along, Artu. Let's find Princess Leia. Between ourselves, I think Master Luke is in considerable danger. And he tried lots of actors to, to put another voice on, to put an American voice on. And uh, then he realized that, well, maybe it didn't work the way he thought it. And he was big enough to say, well, you know, that he changed his mind, which was great. The problem with sequels is that to be really successful, they have to outdo their originals. In the case of The Empire Strikes Back, the follow-up to Star Wars, the challenge was especially formidable. Everybody involved with the film, including actor Mark Hamill, was acutely aware of the audience's high expectations for the sequel. This apprehension of having to live up to the original Star Wars uh, have any bearing or affect uh, the acting? Oh, we were just... It was terrible. I mean, I can lie to you and say, well, no, Stuart, really, we just... We were <laughs> basket cases, sweating bullets. Not so much, you know, thinking about how we were going to act. I mean, you can't, you certainly can't, um, you know, build up that. But uh, we were just apprehensive as to um, how we could tell this story, which was a story that originally we, I heard about in 1976, uh, and and still top, I, you know, the the previous one. And we were all, you know, scared, but um, what happened was that we, when you're on your own, as Mark Hamill, as Harrison Ford thought about it, we were nervous, but once you get into the actual filming, you don't have time to think about that. You're just, you know, relating to the storyline, so. Well, since Star Wars was a tremendous success, you made a film that uh, I thought was a very nice little film, Corvette Summer. I thought it was badly titled, and that may have contributed I did too. to its... Uh, not doing so great at the box office. But does a film like Star Wars, which was immensely successful, mean any more to you uh, because it was successful than something like Corvette Summer? Absolutely not. I, I was, you know, inundated with all-star disaster films and mostly films that didn't uh, require anything more than what I showed in Star Wars. And it, with, with Corvette Summer, uh, it's hard for me to say the title, it was a nice, I thought, Nice little romantic comedy, but I think. But, so. but your name uh, on the picture obviously didn't bring the masses in after Star Wars. Does it bother you that people are more interested in Luke Skywalker than they are uh, in what, what's your name? Um, uh, Harrison Fisher. What? Not really. I. It's you know I never I set out to be an actor just because it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed that communication, but. Um, God forbid you become an actor who was able to sell absolute dreck on your name alone. Uh, I think that a lot of actors don't have uh, one identifiable success in their whole careers, and so I, you know, count myself among the lucky few that's identifiable with anything.